Hi right, guys, welcome back. Got something pretty cool here today. We've got the new Falcon S10i scope to have a play with. Now, if you've seen any of the previous videos, I've been using the large Falcon Endura now for a good few weeks on the XTI and I've been really enjoying it. I spoke to Nick, thought, right, we'll have a little chat, see if I can get one of these. It just borrowed, it is going back. It's just a low note, it's one of their demo ones. I want to give it a little play. A lot of people have been asking me about it. A lot of my customers and a lot of people on the Hunter Field target circuit have been showing a bit of interest in this. It's quite unusual in the LPVO market. Most of them generally are from one to six or one to eight times magnification, whereas this one runs all the way up to 10 times magnification, which may well mean it's fairly well suited to some of our air rifle target shooting disciplines. So we're going to find out. We're going to quickly get it zeroed up at 25 yards just under. We'll get a good idea what the clicks feel like and everything else. We'll go over it as we're doing a bit of shooting with it. Then the party piece to this, I guess, is that we can back it right back off to, well, one times magnification, both eyes open and effectively use it as a red dot. So we'll have a little go with that as well. Then we'll get some HFT targets out and see whether or not we can use it to range find on an HFT course. So quite a lot to do. We'll get stuck in before it starts to rain and we'll, um, we'll see how it pans out. But... Right, I think we're gonna get wet here. So let's give it a quick zero then and see how these um, turrets feel. I'm aiming for the very center of the card. It's quite a nice clear image as well. They feel pretty nice and secure. The clicks are quite delicate, but you certainly wouldn't miss click it even with a glove on, I wouldn't have thought. Once they're locked back down again, them turrets feel pretty secure. Perfect, right, we're quite well zeroed. Okay, so apart from me just taking my time, that felt pretty good. These um, turrets, once they're locked back down, I definitely don't think you're gonna be able to knock those. That's a good start. They also, they've got a little um, key slot in here or a coin slot, so you can reset those to zero, although it's not something that I would normally get too involved in. I never seem to have a rifle zeroed for that amount of time. So pretty good. I think what we're gonna do in a moment, we're gonna get some targets out at 25 yards, I'll get a couple of HFT targets. I'm going to back this magnification right off. Now, what I have noticed is that somewhere around, well, it says one is the lowest marking, the second mark is 1.5 mag, and just under 1.5 times magnification seems to be a pretty good match to the image that I see in my left eye. So if I have this backed off to zero, it actually looks slightly smaller than the image that I see out of my left eye. So unusual in that respect, but I have got peculiar eyesight and I am quite long sighted so oh blimey <laughs> let's um put the illumination on let's see if I can actually hit that top left circle right so I'm just under 1.5 times mag now on a paper target like this I can't really see an awful lot the red dot fills up most of that circle so let's just try and put that straight into the middle of that target and see where we end up no idea, can't tell. Let's whack it up to 10 mag. <laughs> that was pretty close to the ball. I'll take you down there, let's have a look at that. Right, well that's surprising. That was the last shot zeroing it up, so this was at 10 mag. Once I was backed off to one and a half times magnification with the illumination on maximum, it completely covered basically from this red circle in. So that's how much of the target's obscured. The fact that we managed to hit that's pretty good, even get that in the nine ring. We'll try again down here on the 1.5, just under magnification, see if we can um, do it a second time, shall we? Right, well that was surprising that I actually even managed to hit the um, target at all. I certainly wouldn't feel confident using that lower magnification on um, live quarry, to be honest, but we'll have another go. So we'll bang that back down to just under the 1.5. Illumination's on number 12, so it's on maximum illumination. But as I just mentioned, the um, the red dot now at this lower magnification pretty much obscures at least 75% of that target. Oh, a little bit high that time. I mean, realistically, I can't see that target very well. I've got very little in the way of features at that lower magnification. I mean, if you were shooting at metal targets, bright yellow targets, I think we'll go and do that now. I think we'll go and um, drag a couple of HFT targets over and we'll have a go at them with this lower magnification. So back down at 1.5. Yeah, see that 1.5 definitely seems to be a better match to the eyesight in my left eye. 
you could quite easily fly around with both eyes open. You'd get very good target acquisition. I mean, that may be at sort of three mag, two and a half. Yeah, see, that would probably be all right for pest control. If you were shooting up into trees and stuff and you were needing to keep a good eye on what was around you, that would probably work. Of course, with air rifles, it's not so much point and shoot. We need to be a bit more precise. If your target's the size of a person or a large mammal, then of course you may well have a bit more room for, or a bigger margin of error, if you like, when you've got larger caliber rifles. But, oh, I don't know. Two and a half, that looks pretty good. Right, we'll go back to 1.5 and we're gonna go out into the, um, into the yard quickly and we'll get a couple of metal HFT targets out and we'll see whether or not I can hit them. Right, so one and a half mag. Hopefully I've framed the shot fairly well. Just under 25, so I can see my silencer and everything now. I've got a huge depth of field. I mean, it's crystal clear. <laughs> I literally think that's more luck than judgment. Let's go and have a look and see if we actually hit it. Yeah, no hits on the plate. I'd already taken a shot at this the other day, so. Well, I don't think I'd feel particularly confident shooting at um, something live with that lower magnification, certainly with an air rifle anyway, but I can see that it would certainly be a lot of fun for plinking cans, fast target acquisition definitely, and the depth of field is huge. I think what I'll do now is bring it up to four times and see what happens. Right, four times magnification. Oh, that's better. Although I'm four times more wobbly now. Oh, split it. Two o'clock it. Oh, eight o'clock it. And we're getting wet. It should be waterproof, the scope, so I'm not too worried. <laughs> Third time lucky. All right, let's get this stuff out of the range, shall we? All right, there we go. Two o'clocked it, ten o'clocked it, and the third one was a charm. Not too bad. I certainly don't feel that um, confident using these lower magnifications, especially me being wobbly kneeling. However, definitely going to be fun I think um, for a bit of plinking and stuff like that certainly if you've got larger caliber rifles you could definitely um, you'd be accurate enough I'm sure right so we're out of 45 yards 41 and a bit meters we've got some HFT targets out so let's try and zoom in on these first one there Phoenix there that is eight yards so that's the closest HFT target just back from that, the little yellow bird, that's a mini kill. So they are normally between 13 and 25 yards. It's a 15 mil kill on that one. The reason they're tricky at 13 yards is because you're nearly 10 yards back from your parallax distance. So parallax error can be a real problem there. The green bird, that's 25 yards. So that's bang down the middle of the course. That's the parallax distance. So that should be a given. Crowzilla, the crow on the floor behind it, that's 40 yards. Now, we normally use a bit of blur, so if we can distinguish there's a bit of blur on the phoenix behind it, the yellow phoenix at the back, that's 45. Now, we'll normally expect to find a little bit of blur at 45 and it'd be a little bit clearer at 40, and that could be a good way of judging them further targets. So I'm gonna get behind the rifle now. I'm gonna have a peer through. I have tried numerous times so far to actually get photos of what the um, images look like, but it's basically impossible. The phone won't focus. So I'll have to tell you and you'll have to trust me, but I'll get behind it now and we'll see how it, um, how it all looks. Right, up to 10 mag, all covered in raindrops. Right. right, it's this first gray Phoenix then. It's pretty blurred, but they always are at eight yards. You can get all of your aim points in there. So that should never really be too much of a problem. Now. Normally your targets are yellow, which tends to make them stand out a little bit more. The high contrast though of the yellow targets, you'll sometimes get a bit of blurring around the targets and around the kill. But looking at the little bird, so that's out of 13 yards, that's a 15 mil target. So that's the smallest you'll find on an HFT course. They run from 13 to 25 yards, but of course 25 yards, near enough to 25 meters that this is parallaxed at. So parallax error shouldn't be a problem. These 13 yarders can be a bit tricky. 
if you notice I'm just moving my head from side to side so I can certainly induce a tiny bit of parallax error looks like maybe three four mil compared to the size of the target but then it completely blacks out the image so with a decent cheek piece well set up not too bad at all so we're out to the 25 so that's the green bird that's absolutely crystal clear as you'd expect that shouldn't be a problem at all now this is going to be the real test i'm looking at the big crow on the floor so he's the 40 yarder and then i'm looking up at the phoenix on the back he's 45 there is definitely a very small amount of blur between 40 and 45 now that sounds ridiculous but it's quite critical for hunter field target it's definitely not that abrupt a blur but there is definitely a bit of blur there so I think what we'll do we'll try and see if we can knock some of these down I haven't got any aim points so I'll have to just play it by ear and see what happens see if we can knock these down I have to shoo the geese out of the way first and now the goats coming as well so I'll have to shoo everything out of the way first and we'll see if we can take these down but there's definitely a little bit of blur there it would certainly take a little while to get the hang of it but there is something there it's not quite crystal all the way through the animals off right we've got a few pellets left i'm just going to shoot it off of the bipod off of the deck i still can't support the front of the rifle very well with my left hand at the moment unfortunately right what did we zero this at 25 let's go for the little green bird then start with that's a nice crystal image that is there's good definition 40 mil target at 25 yards should be a bit of a sitter really right let's go out to the crowzilla on the floor i right, got that one bear in mind i've literally only put a dozen shots through this can we get through to the phoenix at the back yeah easy right okay um let's see if we can do the little mini bird in here then right let me just see if i can refocus you on that all right hopefully you can see the little one so this is quite a tricky one normally on an hft course because parallax error can really creep in on these ones that are inside of your focus distance no problem i've just had to come back out i was just doing the editing and i thought i'd actually split this one right down here but no i didn't get it that's a bit of luck then right carry on we're in the eight yarder so we're holding over quite a lot our eight and 45 yard aim points are basically the same it's easy when you've set your course out yourself and you know the distances to your targets of course when you're out on an hft course and the course setters there trying to deceive you with range traps and you've got a decent bit of wind and weather and the stress of a competition it's a different ball game altogether however this is a nice little scope Right then guys, we're back. I'll tell you what, I've really enjoyed using this today. It was so easy to get to grips with. All I did was mount it up, adjust the ocular to suit my eye. Everything else is very intuitive about it. It all felt very well put together. Clicks all work nicely. This is the 25 meter focused one. So you've also got a 100 meter focused version, which would be better suited. More like AR-15 type stuff, tactical rifles or pushing 2-2LR out. But overall, it's got a really nice image in this, even against the yellow HFT targets. Decent contrast to it, nice and crisp right up to the edges, just a decent bit of kit. Of course you get a box, no one cares about any of that. The P22 reticle that's in this is a half mil dot based one, so if you've used anything half mil dot before it's going to be very intuitive. I actually like the additional aim points on here. Down either side of the stadia you've got additional aim points for windage and of course holdover. Suits me very well, I know some of you will find that a little bit cluttered, but certainly with the scopes that I'm also using, this just didn't even take any time to think about it, just got on and used it, and that's always a sign of a decent bit of kit, when you can just mount it up and go straight out and use it and hit what you're aiming at. So overall, I'm really happy. This one's going back, but if I end up with the Epic 2 later in the year, then I can definitely see that this would be the sort of scope I'd run on it. So yeah, all being well, we'll see it in the next video, and I'll catch you then.